I should uh, like to start by welcoming our witness and those who have joined us at the QE2 Conference Centre today, as well as those who may be watching the hearing either on television or through the internet. And we've also heard from many other witnesses and have amassed a very considerable body of documentary evidence. Mr Blair, the very powerful speech you made to the House of Commons on the 18th of March 2003. The single most important thing to me about September the 11th, as I've often said, is that 3,000 people died, but if they could have killed 300,000, they would have. And the single most difficult thing we have to face today, and I think we face it still, I think this is why I personally take a very hardline view on Iran, is the risk of this new type of terrorism and extremism based on an ideological perversion, frankly, of the faith of Islam, combining with technology that allows them to kill people on a large scale. Now to the involvement of your cabinet in these decisions. The policy was totally clear. The policy was, we are going to deal with this issue. Our preference is to deal with it through the United Nations, but not dealing with it is not an option. Do you think it was clear, do you think it was understood within the cabinet that we actually had military preparations underway? Yes, of course. And that they were taking collective responsibility for this policy? Uh, of course they were taking collective responsibility for the policy because it was being outlined the entire time and they knew that you can't simply decide but they didn't One know the military preparations. Have... They didn't know the, the military preparations. I, I would underway. have been astonished if they, did, if they didn't, because there was discussion of that. I mean, it's a question of whether they were aware that this was the course that, 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 that they were on. I, I don't think anybody was in any doubt about okay. the course they were on. And, and, and if, you know, that does not mean to say that there weren't some who were saying, I wish we weren't on this course, but I... It really does defy uh, common sense and, and logic, let alone the discussion, to think that there were people in the cabinet who didn't know what was, that, that we were on a course where the principles of it were absolutely clear. Go down the UN route, get an ultimatum. If he fails to meet the ultimatum, we're going to be with America in military action. <laughs> I'll ask Sir Roderick to pick up the questions now, Rod. No one was saying to me, do it a different way. I mean, if someone had, I would have listened to it. You, of course, have got all these notes there, haven't you? Indeed. Yes. For me, as I said again publicly, I was in no doubt it would be beneficial for the world to get rid of Saddam Hussein and to get rid of his regime. On the other hand, I was saying, this is going to be difficult. Look, I could see where this was heading, the same as everybody else. America so you were looking at that with the president in a sort of active sense? Yeah, I mean, look, it was, it was very obvious. You had to deal with the issue. There were two ways of dealing with it change of heart or change of regime, and that was more or less as it remained throughout. <clears throat> I'll turn to Sir Martin Gilbert again. Martin. The nature of the regime could not justify in itself the intervention. It is, our, however, why I think we should be proud of having got rid of them. I'd like to uh, turn to um, <clears throat> June and July 2002, 